citizen for Citizen to a citizen for Key to light Another one. And now, our feature presentation. Uh, welcome back to another episode of... Pause. This one's, a, this one's a sad one. This happened about a couple weeks back. I think it was December 21st. Um, maybe further back where... Um, a female was having a domestic dispute with uh, a male, let's say it's her boyfriend. Um, and um, she called the police. Uh, the police arrived and um, tried to kick in the door. They were unsuccessful. Um, Niani's daughter, uh, oh no, Niani unlocked the door. And when she unlocked the door, she happened to have a knife in her hand and was yelling uh, hysterically, but audible and understandable. And then uh, that's when the police drew their firearms and she walked away from the door and they proceeded to enter. I'll stop there and roll in, roll in the, the, the clip so we can take a look at what happened. The body cam footage of the shooting death of a Lancaster woman, 27-year-old Niani Finlayson, was killed by a deputy after she called 911 to report that her ex-boyfriend had tried to strangle her. And now it is news reporter Michelle Fisher is live in the newsroom with a shocking new video on this story. Michelle? Well, David and Giovanna, a little more than three and a half weeks ago, this fatal deputy shooting occurred. The Sheriff's Department today releasing the 911 audio and that body camera footage from the December 4th incident in the name of transparency, a warning that the footage you're going to see may be disturbing to some. 27-year-old Niani Finlayson shot and killed by an L.A. County Sheriff's deputy. The fatal encounter coming after she'd been the one to call them for help minutes earlier. Yes, hello. Um, I need the police here. This man, he won't get out of my house now. Finlayson heard here making that frantic 911 call shortly after 6 on December the 4th, asking for help at the Cedar Ridge Apartments in Lancaster. Yeah, I need the police here right now. No, because he won't get his hands off of me. This body camera footage showing deputies responding to the domestic disturbance, hearing yelling from inside, then attempting to force entry into the apartment. Then Layson eventually opening the door with a large kitchen knife in her hand. Yeah, I'm not mad because he's hey. You can see weapons drawn as the deputies enter the unit. The deputy in front handing her colleague a taser as they step inside and first encounter Finlayson's nine-year-old daughter. We're freezing the video because of the disturbing nature, but within a matter of seconds, as Finlayson turns towards her boyfriend with a knife in the living room, the officer with a taser draws his service weapon and opens fire, striking Finlayson multiple times. No! No! Drive back! Why did you shoot? That question, top of mind for many, as the community gets a first look at the footage made public today. All right, so as you can see, it, it didn't end well uh, for anybody. Um, super shocked at this. Um, Miani ended up uh, dead. Uh, she was shot several times by one of the officers. Um, several questions here. Could less than lethal force had been used in this situation. Um, hard to say. If you look at the the, um, the four elements of the law of justified self-defense, um, some of the terminology they use is uh, eminent danger, great bodily harm, sexual assault, excessive force, aggressor, instigator. Uh, I mentioned those terms because aggressor has a, has a meaning that we have to look at in, in this um, picture. So uh, aggressor instigator, a citizen who is found to be an aggressor voluntarily provoking the conflict or who use excessive force can be convicted of voluntary manslaughter, even though the use of deadly force compiled with the other requirements of self-defense. So. And, you know, requirements are basically, and I'll roll these in, I'll read them verbatim. 
um, citizen is legally justified. These apply to police officers too, by the way. Uh, but since I'm coming from the perspective of a civilian, um, but these four rules apply as well, okay? Um, the citizen is legally justified in using deadly force against another if and only if the citizen actually believes deadly force is necessary to prevent an uh, imminent threat of death, grave bodily harm, or sexual assault, and the facts and circumstances prompting their belief would cause a person of ordinary firmness to believe deadly force was necessary to prevent an imminent threat of death, great bodily harm, or sexual assault, and the citizen using the deadly force was not the instigator or aggressor who voluntarily provoked, entered, or continued the conflict leading to deadly force, and force used was not excessive, greater than reasonably needed to overcome the threat posed by the hostile. Um, why do I bring this up? Uh, I bring this up because this situation, it, it applies to police. Um, but it also applies to uh, intervening on behalf of another person who is being threatened. Now, at, at first glance, I'll, and I'll put a clip up, I'll have a plane in the corner. You'll see that Niani was standing over the gentleman. Well, obviously not a gentleman because he, he was the one that uh, started this whole, um, this whole situation where police had to be called. But he was on the floor with his hands up. Okay, so in a position of retreat. And then standing over him within three feet was Niani with the knife in her hand. And then the police come around the corner and they see this. Um, is it an opportunity to use less than lethal force? Yes! Hell yeah! Yes, there is an opportunity. There was an opportunity. I'm not sure if you, if you saw in the clip, the first officer that made entry took her taser out and handed it to the secondary and then and, and pulled out her, her uh, main weapon. I'm not sure what, that, what that's about. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a topic of discussion as it should be. But was this officer wrong in shooting Miani uh, to stop the threat? given the position that the officers saw. A uh, person with a knife in hand, uh, standing over a person on the floor with hands up. Um, you know, it's a, it's a difficult job uh, for officers. Um, and uh, this, one was, this one was pretty bad. Uh, but, you know, comment on that. I, I'd like to know from law enforcement I'd like to know from civilians. Um, I'd like to know from instructors as far as, uh, you know, when they teach their classes. I'd like to know that. Um, it was a split decision. You, you, you see this happen in a matter of seconds. Uh, and it, it, even, even the boyfriend who started this whole altercation was screaming, why did you shoot her? You didn't have to shoot her, right? Um, yeah, he, he didn't have to shoot her. Uh, honestly, uh, he could have used less than lethal force. Um, they could have talked it down. Um, now, what happens if they did that? And she proceeded to go ahead and stab him in his throat and kill him. Now, the family wants to know, well, why didn't you stop her? Why didn't you shoot her? You know, you're, so you're, you know, you're in that corner. You're back into that corner where you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Damn. Um, it's a difficult decision. Law enforcement, they don't have easy decisions to make. I, I've got another clip that I wanna roll in. It's completely unrelated. Um, I forget where it is, but I'll roll it in and we'll touch on it. And, and I wanna end on this just to kind of put out there how difficult uh, a, a law enforcement officer's job is. Where, so I'll, I'll cue up the clip. It's, it's where um, this man was in a supermarket. Uh, officers were trying to serve a warrant. They fought forward, fought forward followed him into the supermarket. Then they started chasing him around the supermarket when he wouldn't stop. And he uh, he pulled out a gun. And then he, he started running outside of the supermarket. He ran through the cart festival. Um, and an uh, officer followed him. One of the sergeants followed him. 
Turned around, jumped the wall, pulled out a gun, shot the officer in the head. Supermarket filled with shoppers, all captured on the body cams of San Diego police officers. Eyewitness News reporter Leanne Souter joining us now with that graphic body cam video just released. Leanne? Mark, the drama began inside that neighborhood grocery store. The suspect running through the aisles among the shoppers with police chasing behind. It ended in a hail of gunfire. A deadly and devastating gun battle caught on camera outside a San Diego grocery store, leaving the suspect dead and a sergeant shot in the head. San Diego police just releasing the edited body cam video of the December 7th violence. Officers enter the store and confront Curtis Harris, whom they've been told had a gun. Harris was wanted for a stolen vehicle and an unserved protective order in connection with the domestic violence case. Hey, Curtis. He makes a run for the door where he's met by more police in the parking lot. Hey, hey, we got to he runs into a car corral and jumps a wall. That's when the 46-year-old pulls out the gun. You can see it in his hand and shoots Sergeant Anthony Elliott in the head, then opens fire on the other officers. As police surround Harris, one officer realizes the sergeant is missing. Sergeant and rushes to help him. This is a very dangerous situation. Multiple rounds being fired at officers. And so, you know, the officers did a phenomenal job tonight. Um, you know, obviously we have a sergeant in the hospital. That makes me emotional. The sergeant critically wounded, but alive. Harris pronounced dead. Um, it didn't end well for him. Uh, he, the, all the officers that were in pursuit proceeded to go ahead and neutralize the threat, ending up in that, um, that warrant being served, uh, turning into a uh, corner truck coming to pick him up. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. Damn. Um, you know, it's a warrant. Just take your arrest. And, and go for it and now you're taking a rest you dumbass a forever rest and now you have family members probably kids involved where they're wondering why 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 you know here you are another picture on a t-shirt trying to avoid arrest um, meanwhile you have an officer fighting for his life because he was just doing his job and you decided to shoot him in his head so listen yeah they have some some bad officers out there and and unfortunately the good officers take that bad rap but um they have some great ones as well so i'm gonna leave on that please you know comment um i hate that these stories that i bring to you on on this uh pause platform uh tend to be of the uh sad nature but we, we got to put the question out there to at least have the conversation so Comment, um, let me know what you think and what your thoughts are. All right, it's too good. It's all good. You're still here. Another one.